campus to community, the Columbia Basin College News Magazine to keep you informed about what's happening at CBC and how we may better serve the community. My guests today will include Lynn Studman from the CBC Dental Hygiene Clinic, who will discuss dental health and the services we provide at our clinic. We'll also hear from Paige Wyatt from CBC's Engineering Technology Program and one of her former students, Tracy Van Hoven. Stay tuned, we'll return after this short break. After high school, there were other things I wanted to do before heading off to college. Now that I'm ready to pursue a career, Columbia Basin College's Learning Opportunities Center is giving me the extra help I need to continue on the career path that I choose. here with Assistant Professor and Director for CBC's Dental Hygiene Program, Lynn Studman. Many people use pain as a guideline for when they should seek dental health assistance. Lynn, why is it a bad idea to wait until you're in pain before you see a dentist? Usually if people wait until they're in pain, they either have um, quite a bit of decay happening in their teeth, which is now progressed to the inside part of the tooth or the pulp chamber, and that creates the pain, or they also, or they may also have um, experienced some bone loss, and they may have an abscess around their tooth. So usually pain is not a great indicator of when people should come to the dentist. We'd much rather see them prior to having any pain at all. And why do you think it is that people wait until they're in pain? I think going to see the dentist is really not anybody's favorite thing to do, um, especially they don't necessarily want to um, come and have the experience or uh, pay, use their discretionary income to pay for dental services, but it's one of the most important things they can do for their general health is to keep their dental health high. And what can people do to maintain their dental health? Well, one of the most important things, of course, is daily care, brushing, flossing, but also having their teeth cleaned and a examined by a dentist on a regular basis because if we can handle, if we can get in there and start uh, dealing with things when they're small, they're less expensive, they're not painful, they're usually easy to correct at that point. Instead of waiting until you have a crisis like a toothache, which always seems to happen right before a vacation or a holiday or on the weekend, and um, it's difficult to deal with. And we've been talking about adult dental health, but what about children? Are, is their health equally important? Absolutely. Baby teeth, I think a lot of parents and, and people think that, well, since those baby teeth eventually fall out anyway, is there really such a need to, to take care of them, to fill them if they end up with decay, to have them cleaned or checked regularly? But if you stop and think about it, children's te baby teeth come in, uh, they're full baby teeth dentition by the time they're three years old, but their baby molars can stay in their mouth for as long as age 10, age 12. I've even seen some um, kids who still have their baby molars at age 14. So they're going to be in there for quite a while and they, they act as kind of space maintainers for the permanent teeth. So it's important that they stay in there and not be lost prematurely to de decay or neglect. And what services do you guys provide at the CBC Dental Hygiene Clinic that can help people maintain their dental health? Well, we have a 12-chair clinic, which is on the CBC campus. Our students primarily are trained to do dental hygiene services, which include you know, cleaning teeth, taking x-rays. We have supervising dentists who do dental exams. We do do some limited restorative work, and by that I mean we identify what teeth need fillings, and we try to schedule people to have some of that work done at the clinic, although there's more people um, in need of that than we actually have room for. But at least we're able to give people a treatment plan and an understanding of what their needs are and we're able to do the cleanings and the exams and the x-rays at a greatly reduced rate. If you'd like more information or to make an appointment at our dental clinic, call 542-4571. For hours and directions to the CBC Dental Hygiene Clinic, you can visit our website at columbiabasin.edu forward slash dental clinic. And the first appointment, which is called a screening appointment, is a no charge visit where people can come in um, get accustomed to our clinic, see what services we provide, and also get a sense about what their dental needs are at no charge. Thank you, Lynn. We'll return after this short break.
An Associate of Arts and Science degree from Columbia Basin College is a great foundation for students who wish to major in English, education, the arts, or communications. Today's employers seek applicants within these fields because they have good reasoning skills. They're adaptable and can write and communicate effectively. So no matter where you go from here, you'll have the tools you need to succeed. Joining me now is Associate Professor and Department Lead for the Engineering Technology Program at CBC, Paige Wyatt. Paige has been working in engineering technology at CBC for 15 years. Paige, what do students learn in your classes and how does it prepare them for real world experiences? We basically have three tracks of classes. Uh, the first would be drafting, which is the computer aided drafting. We use the most current version of AutoCAD for that. Uh, they also do problem solving, which is all algebra based, uh, but uh, they do a lot of calculations. And then we kind of have a miscellaneous track, which would include surveying, construction estimating, and specifications, and a materials class. What makes CBC's engineering program different from other programs? One of the things we do is we do push the problem solving more than most two-year colleges. Uh, another thing unique to CBC that has served our graduates well is that we uh, use a broad discipline approach. And what I mean by that is they'll take a mechanical class, architectural class, a civil class, electricity class, and all students have some knowledge of each of the disciplines. Uh, well, you can control the speed. Um, back in the previous menu there, but um, I created this roller coaster and then I uh, created a wire path for it and you can create videos. It's the 3D catapult. Uh, they really tailor their career with their first job, whether they work for a PUD and do electrical work, Department of Transportation or the city and do civil work. Um, so it gives them a lot of employment opportunities. Great. And what kind of person does it usually take to be in the field of engineering technology? What kind of skills or interests should they have? You know, uh, engineering, they always look back, did you play with Legos? Did you think take things apart just because? Um, what I have found most interesting is a student may not have done well in math or liked math and can still do quite well in our program. Um, when we do a project, the big projects, they'll work in teams. So there's the team skills. They'll include a CAD drawing, an estimate, the problem solving. Tends to be most people have a weakness as well as a strength. So uh, students who may not have done well in school in the past have been extremely successful with our program. And what kinds of jobs are you seeing your graduates going into? Our graduates will take a variety of titles. Uh, there's an engineering technician, as well as we have one that's a building inspector. Some will stay with surveying and be surveyors. We've had uh, material testing, engineering assistants, construction management assistants. So uh, some are at the desk 40 hours a week. Some are outside more. Uh, there's just a huge variety of of things that can happen once they go to the workplace. Sounds like they've been successful, thank you. If you'd like more information about our engineering technology program, you can visit our website at columbiabasin.edu forward slash ENT. And stay tuned because coming up, we'll be speaking with one of Paige's former students.
I'm here with Tracy Van Hoven, Engineering Technology alumna. Tracy graduated in June of 2010, and three days later, she started an internship with Infinia Corporation. The following October, she was offered a full-time position as a design drafter, working on Infinia's Power Dish. Tracy, tell us what Infinia Corporation does, and then specifically, what is the Power Dish? Infinia Corporation is a startup solar power company. We developed the Power Dish with the Sterling Free Piston Sterling engine. Um, the Power Dish is a mirrored concentrator, looks kind of like a satellite, that directs the sunlight to the front of the Sterling engine. The Sterling engine, with all its components, brings in cold air from the back, the heat from the sun, the helium expands and produces the pressure that makes the piston move and then we put power onto the grid. Wow. And what was your role in the development of this? Uh, like most of us at Infinio, I play a lot of roles. Uh, one role is drafting. The others can be anywhere from installation of the dish and the heat drive. And uh, a lot of it's data analysis, system testing, and uh, data reporting. Great. And can you tell me how CBC's program helped you to prepare for this job? CBC provided the stepping stones for everything that I do at Infinia, from drafting material specs and most of all um, business management and just being professional in every way. Excellent. And what advice would you give to students who are considering going into the field of engineering technology? Engineering really, I mean, you can't look at it as being scary. It's really fun. You get to take things apart, you get to put things back together, and you actually get to invent things on your own. And the finishing product is quite rewarding. Thank you, Tracy. That concludes this episode of Campus to Community. If you'd like more information about the topics you've heard today, you can call us at 547-0511 or visit our website at columbiabasin.edu. I'd like to thank each of my guests for joining me today. Thank you. Sign up again. Yeah, because I like licked my teeth or something weird. Thank you, Tracy. Okay. okay.